Nil-nil draw here at Arbour Park, a successive home nil-nil draws now in the league. Uh, what were your thoughts on that one today, Scott? 45 minutes at the beginning, I thought, was really um, flat. I think the boys looked a bit leggy, tired, and people say oh, it's to be expected, but we talked about it before the game, um, about trying to start with a tempo, and we just never really got going. Um, we still had a couple of half-decent chances. Um, but second half, I thought we were really bright. I thought David Ogbonna gave us a real spark. Um, I thought he was excellent at times, but I thought we were going to go and sort of get, ahead, get ourselves ahead in the game. Uh, didn't manage to do it. Obviously, them going down to 10 men, sometimes it makes it more difficult. Um, but then they still had a couple of chances. Uh, so, yeah, overall, a bit deflated that we couldn't find a goal. Um, but at the same time, if you're going to draw a game, I'd like to do it with a nil-nil. Um, another clean sheet, a 7 in 9 now, or 7 in 10, I think it is. So it shows that we're not conceding many goals, uh, but what we realise is that we've got to score. Um, obviously, the Weymouth game today to not score in two league home games is really disappointing. Um, I think we've got the people that can do it. Um, but yeah, just not managing to find the net in the last two matches um, at home in the league. We spoke briefly just before this interview about the referee being a little bit potentially card happy today. We saw Manash booked immediately after two minutes. What were your thoughts today on the amount of yellows that we saw result in two red cards as well? It's getting ridiculous. Um, I just spoke to their manager as well. and It's probably one of the most genuine, genuinely contested matches I've played in a long time. Two sides that were going for the ball. Um, two sides that weren't moaning about tackles themselves really. Um, I don't think there was a bad tackle in the game. Two people sent off and the amount of yellow cards now is completely destroying us. It's completely destroying the game. For us and for Robbie as well, um, I've just walked past him and he said, I don't know how the red card's going to affect us. And it's the same for us. Um, on another day, there's probably maybe two, three, four bookings. I think there was 10 or 11. Um, it's every week. It's every week. Someone's got to do something. Um, other managers are talking about it as well. It's not just me. Um, it's gone, it's farcical at the moment. So it's just crazy, mate. It's, Looking at it at the moment, I think to myself, there's going to be so many players that are um, suspended later on in the season. Um, and not only that, it's costing the clubs a fortune. So I think today there's £200 worth of bookings. So, and that's in one match. Um, we can't afford to keep paying for yellow cards. Um, and I'm sure other clubs around the country can't either. So they are getting card happy. Um, it's not helping anyone. No club wants it. The only people that want it at the moment are, are the referees are happy to give out yellow cards. And that results in reds. But... I think Temi's one's really unlucky. Listen, I get on really well with, with their management team, um, but the fact that their players fall into their dugout, that is the only reason why he's got a second yellow card. He's used his body to shield the ball. He's stronger than their lad. He's fallen into their dugout. It's never, ever a yellow card, in my opinion. I don't even think it's a foul. Um, he's just stronger than the lad. I think the lad's maybe 18 years old. Um, Temi's a big, strong boy, but yeah, I'll have to watch it back. But you can't appeal yellow cards, and that's the issue. Going back to the game then, you said it was a bit of a lacklustre first half, uh, but in the second you did also point out David Obono who made a real real impact. He had a chance I think as well cleared off the line. Uh, again, what did you think of his display after Tuesday night as well? He's so exciting, so so exciting. I think with David that he does the first bit brilliantly well um, and then it's just the end product at times that we's, we're kind of looking for. Um, I've got no complaints with David though because that will come. He's still 22 years old and He's probably played, what, seven or eight games at this level. Um, he's going to be a really, really good player. I think that his ceiling is a lot higher than what he's showing now. Um, and he will neaten up in the final third. When he gets running at people, um, I get excited myself as a player, as a manager. Um, so, yeah, he's a really good one to have with us at the moment. Um, enjoying watching him, but I'd like to see him maybe chip in with a few more assists and goals. Um, but I'm sure that will come. And then in that last 15 minutes, we did play against 10 men before it being equaled up with the other red card. What did you feel wasn't quite there to try and get us that goal lead at the end in that final 15 minutes? Didn't use the ball well enough. Um, we need to be more patient, sort of drag them out. Uh, but to be fair to them, they're an honest bunch, Chelmsford. Um, I think they defended their box really well, but we've got to probably be a little bit neater, find a few different little combinations in and around the box. Maybe a little bit one-dimensional, just trying to get out to David all the time. Um, but when something's working, you, you stick to it, you keep doing it. So. Um, yeah, set pieces as well. I thought set pieces today were going to be a big part of the game. Um, I think they're a relatively small side, but we weren't able to do that. Obviously, Temi's headers hit the post or the bar. Uh, so, yeah, overall, take a point, move on. Um, I think it's five wins, five draws now. After the Tunbridge game, we would definitely have taken that. Um, but at the same time, I think Chelmsford had a couple of good chances. I think the draw is probably a fair result. Um, so no, no complaints on my part. Um, we had a target for this week with 
uh, Chelmsford, St Albans and Eastbourne um, and hopefully we can achieve that. And just as you said there, two your tough away trips to come now in the next week, uh, Tuesday night of course at St Albans City and then next Saturday Eastbourne, what are your thoughts now looking into those two? I think we'll have to wrap the boys up in Cotton Mall uh, for the next two or three days. There's some tired bodies in there, some tired legs. Um, we'll look to maybe freshen it up, um, see how the boys are over the weekend. St Albans, really good side, football team. Um, they will use the ball really well. The pitch is absolutely huge. So it's another great game for us. Um, really good manager over there as well. So we'll have to prepare. We'll worry about St Albans first and Eastbourne later on. Um, take each game as it comes. So. Um, yeah, we've set a target for the week and I think that we need to try and achieve that. We don't want to be in a relegation battle, but at the moment, obviously, I think we're two points adrift. Um, I think we've got a game in hand here there, here and there. So I know as well with the FA Cup, um, we've got a couple of rearranged fixtures. It's going to be a congested uh, fixture list. So the squad's not huge. Um, we can't have a surplus amount of players. Um, so we need to make sure that we look after them. and maybe freshen it up from time to time um, and just make sure that we get people out there that can do, do a good job, um, play at a tempo like we want to play at. We tried to emulate the way that we could play with a tempo like we did against Ebsfleet today, but you, you genuinely can't do that every week. Um, the boys aren't superhuman. Uh, so, yeah, I think overall um, it would have been nice to be able to nick one today, but we haven't been able to do it. Uh, we'll take it for now and move on to Tuesday night.